Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the talk. And uh, I just wanted to talk, chat, really, it's informal. Please feel free to ask any questions or anything. But um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, about the sort of route that I've taken to through my career in, in STEM. And uh, my uh, STEM subject is, uh, I've got a physics background, but um, it's all been around the optical um, systems and optical fabrication route. So you could talk a little bit about, um, about the industry and myself a little bit. So it feels very odd talking about myself, but there we go, We're just, uh, I'm not used to that, so bear with me. Okay, so, you know, are engineers and scientists born or created? You know, I, you know, I think there's a bit of both really. Um, personally, you know, do you, I always think to myself, do you have a natural curiosity for how things work? Do you wonder, how did somebody figure out that a computer was even possible? You know, um, do you switch something on? and say what needed to happen before that came on or do you just accept it? So, and there's been many female pioneers through the years of um, STEM subjects. And it's only in uh, recent decades that uh, the, um, this has been appreciated and recognized. There's pictures of eight women there who've really shaped modern science, um, you know, ranging uh, from pre-war through to uh, you know, the, the 1980s in these cases here. So astronauts, physicists, radiation, isotopes, you know, all areas of science uh, where women have contributed to what we consider is modern science today. So we've always been here and we've always contributed. Uh, so what's changed? I was born in the 1960s. I don't admit that to anybody really, not very often, but uh, I was born in the 1960s. And I did a quick Google search, as you do, for job um, adverts in the 1960s. When I was born, this was the expectation of the female career. It's yes, there were other, you know, other options, but generally the careers advice was around nursing, bookkeeping, typing calls. And you know, there wasn't the opportunity or the encouragement for women to be involved in the subjects that we have today. So what does it look like today? Well, today, the difference really is one of opportunity, one of opportunity and encouragement. You know, the expectation has gone. You, you can now do, you have the opportunity to do what excites you and what interests you and change convention, you know, opportunities that add a missing dimension to STEM industries, shape the landscape, you know, for, for people coming behind you as well as plowing, you know, plowing forward, or going forward. So really opportunities are limitless, but as individuals, it's our responsibility to take opportunity when it presents. You know, it's our responsibility to do that. So a little bit about me, as I said, I was born in um, 1964, which makes me 57 years young. And, um, Spent my early years, um, we moved from Lancashire quite early in my, in my life to North Wales. And you can see a little picture of me there, sat on, a, on the horse there. The family had a fairground um, and in North Wales. And, um, you know, so I grew up in that environment, that mechanical environment, making things work, fixing things. And I think it, it fueled my interest from a very early years. So initially educated, uh, to O level and school left at 16, as my, all my family had done before me. And uh, I was generally interested in sports, still am, and anything that moved mechanically. And basically, I still am. So I haven't changed really, um, just got grey hair. Um, the <laughs> so I secured a trainee position with Pilkingtons in North Wales. Now that the trainee position really was the name that they gave to apprentices that were over 18. Um, so now you don't, there's no age limit on being a, an apprentice these days. So that's another positive aspect um, of change. And that gave me the opportunity to discover a whole new world that I didn't even know existed. And it was interesting, it fired my imagination. 
and I, they also gave me the opportunity to continue my education through uh, BTEC uh, and uh, HNC and ONC, both in physical sciences. And um, I really developed looking over there a, a, a passion for the, the subject. And obviously, having worked working for an optical systems company, that was where my um, uh, education was focused during those uh, work-based projects and work-based learning. Now those opportunities uh, exist today and you know through the degree apprenticeship program you can get a degree and, and work in the same way. Um, I later com completed a physics degree at, uh, at Liverpool John Moores and that was a stepping stone really and a key factor in the career path as it went from there. My career journey is a seriously bad mullet there. I really think you should take note of that at this point and that, you know, photographs in the future will, will come back and haunt you. But <laughs> I, um, I worked on a particular very early stage process of the direct machining of optical components, uh, CNC computer controlled machining. You wouldn't even believe the size and capacity of some of the computers we worked on. 128 kilobytes is incredible. But um, OK, so and I was just very lucky and took the opportunity that was presented to me to work and push through that process. And it's a very early process. And um, we eventually, through company purchase, Pilkington was um, uh, acquired a large American company. So we transferred that out to America. Age 23, I found myself on a plane transferring some technology to America. I didn't even have a degree at that stage. So that was that was quite, um, you know, again, opportunity. To, I was scared, <laughs> I'll be honest, I was quite scared, but uh, I did it and it was a fantastic opportunity to um, an experience. So develop those and that led on to a career basically around optical fabrication techniques and um, computer controlled um, machining and uh, so modern manufacturing really, but from the early days. So a consultancy designing and developing tests. And then I took the leap into manufacturing. So working for a manufacturing company based in St. Asaph still and developed a single point diamond turning facility there, which is the first commercial optical manufacturing um, company that providing that process as a service. And it became the largest in Europe. It was a very, um, exciting growth time because it was a growth of thermal imaging and um, so lots of interesting materials that the process lent itself to. Leaving out, moving on a bit into consultancy uh, work and I worked all over the world uh, then going into companies again with this um, developing, helping them develop their processes and products and making sure that they were uh, geared for the next generation which led me through my own consultancy to work on a project for Glyndor University, which is where I am today. That was about 10 years ago now. I joined them as a consultant through Optics Know How and um, to help with a ESO telescope mirror project. And this is how things evolve. They evolve really quite quickly. Um, and that process was to produce, I've got a picture of the telescope here on the next slide. This big telescope here, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but uh, see the huge telescope in the middle of the uh, middle of the screen there. Now that's being built currently in Chile, at the top of a mountain in Chile, and uh, Glyndor were part of the development process for the fabrication of that huge mirror. And um, uh, I, was, I was a consultant on developing that process. And I really enjoyed the time on that project and ended out um, where I am today. So once that project was complete, you know, what do you do with that skill and that technology? And, uh, you know, how do we optimize what was, what was done? So we created a commercial group. I remember I'm from a commercial background. So, you know, e even universities, we have to make money. You know, it's... Um, I uh, think people don't realize that <laughs> sometimes, but um, Precision Optical Systems Group was formed from that group. And they today are one of the leading large optics manufacturing facilities, the only one in, in the UK that can make up to two meter size optics. So still a phenomenal progress. And you can see on the right hand side there, some of the projects that I've been involved with 
through my uh, consultancy and previous um, roles, and that's producing thermal imaging lenses, military applications, head up displays, tank uh, visualizing optics, and um, the uh, underwater cameras, these big domes here, and the, the uh, Gwilio telescope here, which is our home design, um, designed by the um, uh, Precision Optical Systems Group. So huge variety of products and, and opportunities that have presented themselves. And then more recently, about two years ago, you'll see at the footer of my, um, uh, just over two years ago, we developed the uh, Center for Photonics Expertise or CPE. Hazel's joining us today, very much um, driving that project um, through Wales. And, uh, and that is really the opportunity where I saw of the skill that exists in universities to actually be disseminated to companies and help them to, to develop their project. So uh, very recently, I was appointed the chair of Professor of Enterprise Engagement and Knowledge Transfer at uh, Glyndor University, something I'm very proud of from my apprentice days. So as my title said, you know, this is a very unconventional route, um, but it doesn't mean you know, that it's it's the wrong route. You know, everybody has their own path to follow and it's about taking opportunities as they present themselves. So a few more pictures, everybody likes pictures. They don't want to listen to people um, talking all the time. So this here on the top left is the very first um, product I was involved in developing. It's actually a bifocal contact lens that was directly machined using single point diamond turning. These were on sale and people wore them, went through clinical trials. And my career path has taken me right the way through to making, if you look on the, towards the right-hand side here, two meter size optics, you know, 1.5 meter size optics. So from one extreme to the other, uh, it's used, utilizing um, the same, uh, the same process. So my skill set, you could say my career has grown, but so has the things that we've been involved in making through the, through the years. And you know, a lot of that is around the testing. So the skills, what this slide is really to represent is one of opportunities, but also the skills involved. It's not just one discipline. This is a team event that brings products together. You see at the bottom left, they're mathematical modeling skills, you know, vacuum technology skills, material science, metrology, so measurement of surfaces, high level manufacturing, you know, large scale manufacturing. Um, engineering design, um, you know, finite element analysis of uh, modeling of, uh, of, of things, all to go into this big system or this small system on the right. So just give you a flavor of the sorts of jobs. You know, all of those are done by different people and it comes together as a complete product via a team. So uh, of which we're, we're very proud of. And I, throughout my career, I've, I've always worked as part of a team and uh, I very much enjoy doing so which is why I went as a consultant and then I actually enjoyed being back as a team. So that was, that was good. So why should we choose STEM as a career? I'm not gonna to lecture to you. Uh, I'm not a lecturer. <laughs> so, uh, but it's interesting, it's challenging. You bring another dimension to discussions. You know, women have a, a unique way of analyzing things, um, cut to the chase basically, but, uh, and it's an amazing opportunity to contribute to the future world, you know, and, and STEM brings all of that, whether you're on the design, the computational, the practical, the mechanical, it doesn't really matter. They all come together. So, you know, we need looking at the picture on the right hand side there, you know, we're very much underrepresented in, in STEM and that the opportunity is there. Okay. Um, the opportunity is there with education, with opportunity. There's a lot more jobs available in STEM than any other discipline, especially at the moment. Uh, so the opportunity is there. So be a pioneer, you know, um, and, and make, make your way and, and support um, STEM as I have done over, over the years. And, you know, let's turn the tide, let's turn those statistics. At least let's get a gender balance through the, uh, uh, through the so I'd encourage anybody. It's been a fantastic ride for me. I've loved every minute. I still do. Sounds like I'm finishing. I'm not, but <laughs> but I have loved every minute. So I, high, I highly recommend it.
Okay, thank you.